I've had some dark times in my life and it's been hard. And I, I was about to give up. I was ready to give up. I had enough. I couldn't take it anymore. Smiley face is not always happy. Sometimes it's, it's hard. Uh, it's not easy sometimes. Had a friend come to me and say, uh, I'm going to come and take you to church. Sunday morning, be ready at half 10. I'm ready. Sure enough, beep beep. Out the door goes. Where are we going? Green Pasta. No chance. Too many crazy people there. Right, we went. Look at me now. Still there. Two life groups, friends, a church family that cares, a pastor who I. <laughs> family, pastors that look after you and have a good time, have a laugh, but knows the, the word of God. I want to share this with you. Thou prepares the table before me in the presence of my enemy, anointing my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely the goodness and the mercy shall follow me for all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And Jesus was walking on the beach. Jesus said to Simon, Simon, do you love me? Yes. Simon, do you love me? Yes. Simon, do you really love me? You know that I do. Simon, I'm going to go and prepare a place for you. No more crying. No more sorrow. No more death. Oh, the streets are paved with gold. I want to hear him say, Come on in, my child. Come on in. <laughs> I love you. I missed you. I hope to see you soon. God bless. And may the Lord be with you. So, uh, what a great night we had on, uh, on Sunday night at the drive-in. And so I want to thank you all for your faithfulness. It was just one of those uh, lovely nights when the Lord just seemed to have his smile on us. And of course, there's a rainbow over us and it was so good. So those nights just help to keep our church family together. And some of us just need that contact. And so thanks for making your effort for the sake of others. And so our next one uh, will be on the 2nd of August. Uh, and let's make our effort to be out uh, for each other and to let our witness shine for Jesus. There were so many new faces out who have been listening uh, to us online and we even have had a number of uh, international online church family beginning to grow and so just welcome you all here this morning and we are now feeding people outside of our reach along with the daily devotionals which we will restart in August and we thank God that there is fresh bread uh, in our house and it's in this house. A lady told me your teaching carried me uh, through three months of real hardship. And so for the people listening today from Australia, Philippines, Malaysia, Dubai and New York, uh, you're very welcome and the Lord bless you, we hope today in Jesus' name. I want to thank all the life group leaders and the pastoral assistants and staff and pastors and all the, the hordes of volunteers who responded to this uh, lockdown crisis. Here, what... Uh, Listen to what you've been part of. You've served 3,996 meals to the NHS and other frontline workers. You served 720 food bank parcels to our community. You sang worship songs to people in nursing homes and folds. You gave out 1,300 gifts to kids and 18 people made decisions to follow Jesus. Come on, you're incredible. Come on, let's get revival done. And next Sunday, Pastor Bill is bringing a word to us. Why not invite your friends to listen in, especially at that Freedom in 40 Minutes service at 8 p.m. As you know, we believe that God has been using this terrible pandemic to bring his people into a deeper communion with himself. 
uh, particularly in our homes and family units, with the Lord's table and the breaking of bread being at the centre of our protection and having a personal reformation in the home and in the family. We pray that you are understanding the times that you're living in and that you're responding to the word of God by preparing your heart and your family before the Lord. This is not a time to mess around, folks, and church. Over this last month, we've been, uh, we believe we've been led by the Spirit to, uh, to speak on uh, how to reset uh, your life. Um, we looked at the places that the Joshua generation had to go through to get to their promise from the Lord. They were the generation that would get the job done for Jesus. I believe this is the same generation. We have spoke on holiness and what it really means uh, because God demands that we be holy as he is holy. And that was such a revelation message and cleared up so many misunderstandings uh, on the subject of holiness. And then we looked at prayer and why do we need to pray? Why did Jesus say we ought to pray and always pray? And then lately we looked at being witnesses for the, for the Lord and why Jesus told his church to wait for a witness from heaven before you would be endued with power uh, from above and spoke on this baptism of the Holy Spirit and with fire. And for some of us, we just need filled. And then for other of us, we just need filled again because it's the Holy Spirit that makes the difference. And so following on from that today, I thought it would be good to speak to you on how to get God's attention as you begin to seek the Lord for yourself. God has always uh, has always had a way that he likes to be approached. And as you begin to seek the Lord, we want to help you on that quest or in that quest to turn uh, uh, towards the Lord. So turn with me to the book of Ruth, Ruth chapter 3, verse 1 to 5, uh, and let's read this together. Then Naomi, uh, uh, her mother-in-law, said to her, that's Ruth, my daughter, shall I not seek security for you? that it may be well with you. Now Boaz, whose young woman you were with, is he not our relative? In fact, he is winnowing barley tonight at the threshing floor. Therefore, wash yourself and anoint yourself. Put on your best garment and go down to the threshing floor. But do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. Then it shall be when he lies down that you shall notice the place where he lies and you shall go in and uncover his feet and lie down and he will tell you what you should do. And she said to her, all that you say to me, I will do. Let's pray. Father, just thank you for uh, your lovely presence with us today, Lord. I pray for each family gathered uh, today to listen. I pray God that this will be a blessing and a help to each one of them, Lord, as we seek your face and, and look to you for these days, Lord. You're, our, you're the lifter of our heads, Lord. And so do that today, Lord. And may, our, may your smile be upon us today and may it be sweet in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so I want to talk to you about five steps to intimacy and to a walk with God. Simple steps. Simple things that if you will apply these to your life and to your attitude, things will begin to happen for you. And so let's look at, let's look at how you can get God's attention today, that it might be well with you. The, the Methodist movement and the fundamentals of their faith have understood that God is a God of method and of pattern. And through understanding his methods, they believe that we can begin to understand him and his ways. And through that, there is a way of approaching God, especially if you really need him. We can't just approach God any old way we like. He's God. There has to be some respect here. This is God. You don't mess with God. And so this is a method of approaching God from the scriptures. Uh, and it's important we understand that for it to be well with us, as the Bible puts it. What uh, what we are reading about is about one woman, this girl called Naomi, and she is teaching a younger woman called Ruth how to approach this man called Boaz. 
Understand this, that Naomi is a type or a pattern of the nation of Israel. And Ruth is a type uh, of the New Testament church. And Boaz is a type of Jesus, our kinsman redeemer. It's such a wonderful book. And Naomi gives Ruth five simple steps to getting Boaz's attention. Anybody need God's attention today? Anybody want to get into a place of intimacy with Jesus? Anybody want it to go well with them today? Well then, here we go. Number one, find out God's agenda. Know what is the desire of your heart. You must know and decide what is the priority your hearts, of your heart's desire. What would you see as your finish line? What would you satisfy your desires for him? Pastor, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Pastor, I want to hear God's voice. Pastor, I need his healing touch. Pastor, I want to break a few habits that are really destructive in my life. Pastor, I want to get and hold down a job. Could I just do that? I, I want to get a new house for when my baby comes. I want to be consistent for a change. You need to know that it is uh, what it is that you want to get God's attention for. You must know you can't live your life meandering all around, hoping you hit something. You need a target in mind. What is God's agenda for you? Ruth wasn't looking for just any man. She was looking for the man. She knew her man. All of her life was preparing her for this moment. And she had done her study. She knew where he was and even when he would be there. And so most people don't succeed today because they don't take the time to research and plan what is the priority in their life. And so they meander all over the place. What kind of man do you want to marry? Because if you don't know, girl, any oil disaster will do. So just ask Lorraine, what do you ask God for? Because you need to bear in mind, you might get it. And so you better be sure that you, would, that you ask for and then receive is what you really need in this life. A good question to ask yourself is, <clears throat> would it be your will, Lord, for me to have this, to have it? Ask God, is your name on it? Because if it's not God's heart for you, it could be your covet and something that belongs to somebody else. God doesn't want us jealous of each other. He wants you to want only what he meant for you to have and not what he meant for me to have. And so often we buy cars and houses that we can't afford just to keep up with the Joneses next door and now you're suffering for it financially. But if you really want to be truly successful and for it to go well with you, only chase after things that God meant for you to have. He is not going to want to give you an unsaved husband. There are some battles in life that we don't have to have. And we don't need to fight for the rest of our days. And sometimes doing it our way is not always about fighting to win. For it to go well with you, it can mean knowing which battles not to fight. Because you're, you are not anointed to fight those kind of battles. You're not called to fight that. But you are envious of other people's successes. And when you are envious of others, you can't be successful at what God wants you to be and now you have to overcome envy know that God has a place for you and be content in, the, in there and you'll remember all your past struggles and, and suddenly they will appear justified in preparing you for the place that God has for you they are defining moments in all our lives and when you come to them you look back and go Lord do you know why I wasn't happy about that at that, uh, uh, the time? I wasn't happy about what happened to me. But now that it's happened, now that I, I'm here where you want me, I am glad it happened to me because if I hadn't gone through that, I wouldn't be ready for this now. Know when and what it is that you need God's attention for. You see, we need to wake up in the morning with an agenda to make something happen. If you're just getting up because you're, t you're tired or, or lying there, nothing will happen in your life and you will end up better and complaining all the time about everybody else's blessing and then you get jealous because nothing ever happens for me. If you know, do you know if you're here today and you know everybody's business, let me tell you, you you're a lazy fool. 
You don't, you need to start hanging out with busy people. Busy people don't have time to care what gossip is going on in somebody else's life. They have enough trouble dealing with everything that they're doing. And so I don't get involved in all that stuff. But she said that I was and he didn't and I wasn't for I thought you thought I was when I was not. Come on, come on church, get, get a life. Sorry I didn't take my medicine this morning. I, I, I am, I'm sorry to say, I, I should have taken a medicine. But you, we're in for it today. But if you want a life, if you want a life, know God's agenda for your life. When you have God's agenda, you don't quit because of how you feel. Because that's irrelevant. You have to do it and do it today. The only reason I'm still here is because I'm still on what he called me to do. And so I can't give up until I finish. Okay, you're listening well. Then number two, wash your face. Don't let your dirty past get on to your future. Oh, she says to Ruth, Naomi said, wash your face. Wash your face means wash everything off of you that you collect it along the journey of your past and prepare yourself for where you're going. You see, God wants you to wash your past off so it doesn't dirty your future. You would be surprised at the people who have ruined their present because of where they came from and brought with them bitterness and past disappointments are coming out of their mouth because they haven't washed they're passed away. You can see them on Facebook making their wee sarky comments that reveal the dirt that they have picked up along the way. And so those people are not ready for what God would love to do now. But you're still polluted by what you went through then. Still married in your head to the last guy. And it's killing your marriage now because you're treating Jimmy like he was Billy. <laughs> don't you try to control me. I've been there and you're not going to do that to me again. And you weren't ready to get married because you never washed your face. You see, you have, you have walked into your future with two layers of other men still on you. And you're ruining your present because your past hasn't been dealt with. Ouch. Pastor Jeff, that was a bit so. I know. I'm sorry. I'm just saying. You see, this old woman, Naomi, said to the young girl, wash your face. Get in prayer ministry and wash your face. Be prepared to get a good scrubbing and wash your past off. You know what? It's not a one-off experience, this prayer ministry. I, do you know what? I'm going to be going in a couple of weeks' time because I feel I need to, I need to do it. I don't care how painful it is on, on you or on me. If you don't wash your face, it's going to affect your future. You're not ready for the, what Boaz has for you. And I tell you, we must do it and I must do it. I shouldn't be able to look at you and see your past on your face. And sadly, the opposite is true to you I can't because you can be delivered of something and still be walking around thinking your face is still dirty. And so say, wash your face. Wash your face. Wash your face until people can't see where you used to be. Naomi told Ruth to wash her face. You can't go to the bed of Boaz and have intimacy with Jesus looking like one of those Moabites. Some of you don't like taking instructions from your pastor, but perhaps if you would your life wouldn't keep falling over in the way that it has. I find out in hours of helping people that they don't really want your counsel. They just want you to agree with their bad choices. And if you don't, they will do it anyway and still blame you for it later. Hear me and hear me good because listen, education will not fix this. You know, you can have more degrees than a thermometer and still think that you're second class. Hmm. Isn't that the truth? There is a way of approach, approaching life that I might go well with you, but you are not able to wash your face because you won't take the time to do it. Okay, number three. The third thing Naomi tells Ruth to do to get Boaz's attention is, she says, and then anoint your faith, face. And that means take on a fresh heart, uh, Ruth, and a fresh attitude. You see, in Bible days, they anointed their face with oil and, and it kind of did what makeup does for us today. It, it kind of brightens up your countenance. It gives you a fresh, clean, glowing look. In a way, that's what God's anointing does. It gives you a glow. 
it's the afterglow of having been in his presence. And it gives you an excitement and it gives you a positive attitude and it gives you a thankful heart that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But what I want you to, what I want you to see is that this is something that you put on. It's a decision. This is not you. You have to put it on. If you won't put it on, it will keep you unemployed. It will keep you divorced. It will keep you single because people can't handle your attitude and your heart. What they want from you is somebody who will come in with their face glowing and say, Good morning. Can I be of service to you? See, they, they don't want you coming in scratching your rear end and with your hair clumped to your head and stuck there and six big black heads bigger than your head growing out of your face. Like, that's not what people want. And so you're saying, oh, oh, I'm too late again. I'm sorry if I'm in work late again. I had to go through the traffic and, and my auntie's on the ball again and my head's killing me. And do you know what? I, I, you should be grateful I made it in today. Nobody wants to hear or see that. Not every time they see you. Okay, sometimes, but not every day. The Bible says, put on the Lord Jesus. It doesn't matter whether you feel good if you are an overcomer. You put on the Lord Jesus and we walk in his anointing after you have prepared yourself for it. Did you know, I have found out nobody, nobody feels anointed all the time. So there are times when you have to put him on. Do you know? Because if you don't start changing your attitude, you will miss your altitude. <laughs> I thought that was just so good. <laughs> Walking into life like you are still a victim of your past, still a victim, and then you wonder why people run whenever you come in. And listen, it's not a curse, and it's not the devil, and it's not that church people are ugly. It's your attitude that stinks. The Bible says, serve the Lord with gladness. He then asked you how you felt. He says, if you're going to come in and hoover around the church for me, do it with a smile or don't do it at all. God says, come before my presence with thanksgiving. I want, to, I want you coming in singing, says the Lord. Don't come in moaning. I always end up doing this. I'm always doing this here. So I'm fed up doing this. Like you were doing God a favor. And so he wants you going into his presence singing with not a care in the world because you left that down and just started singing. My chains fell off. My heart was free. I tried the world, but it couldn't fill me. There's nothing, nothing better than you. You know, that's what God was looking for. So take off your hummy head, brother, and put on his happy head. It's a decision that you make. And listen, when you put on Jesus, he'll give you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. But you have to decide to put it on until it becomes a habit in your life. So today, make putting on Jesus your new habit every morning. You have been picking your nose now for 15 years. Listen, here, use a hanky. <laughs> That's a decision. <laughs> use a, it's a decision until it becomes a habit. You know, and I have the habit. And so anoint your face. You can't get God's attention and be a homie head and be in the victim all the time. You're listening well. Number four, change your garments. What does that mean? Dress and prepare for where you're going. Put on your faith and change into where you're going means to dress or prepare for where you're going. Do you know, I, I've seen wee boys that want to be George Best put on their Man United kit because that's where they want to go and that's who they want to be. Naomi says to Ruth, before you go to him, put on now what you will need for when you are there with him. Our God is going to bless a prepared people, prepared for a new life of obedience. Are there any faith-filled people listening to me today? Faith to believe for a place that you have never been before, but you're not there yet. But you are preparing yourself for where you're going to end up. Your destination needs to be on you now. That is why you get up, 
you shower, you shave, you put on smellies, you dress the best you can because you are preparing yourself for the day when you get to the place that you're going to end up, even when you aren't there yet. Now that's faith. That's faith in action. That's getting dressed for where you're going. Get prepared. Get dressed for where I'm going. I'm practicing on being blessed. I'm getting ready now for what is coming later. When the cry is made, behold, the bridegroom comes. I'm going to be prepared to go out to meet him. You see, you ought to be ready for the things that your eyes have not yet seen and your ears haven't even heard yet. And so be ready for your old friends to start to say to you, who does she think she is? Huh? Be ready for that, you know. Number five. Naomi, and, and this is the last one, Naomi says, learn how to wait. Be a servant. Be his servant. And do it without preconditions. Move into the place where your blessing is going to come from. Have you ever noticed that whenever depression comes, that one of the first things it does is, is to try to get you to stay in the house? Because the devil knows to get out and into blessing, you have to go to the place where Boaz is. And sometimes he will get you all dressed up, yeah, but going to the wrong place. Jesus is not in the club or he's not in the bookies. It's a dangerous thing to not know where your place of blessing is. You go to the place he's calling you to. And so don't forsake the assembling of the church together. And when you first get saved, sometimes you feel like you don't fit in the church. Because you've come from a different background and you don't know it. But now you don't fit in the place you came from either. But you're dressed and dressing for the place you're going to. But you don't fit there yet either. You're too in to be out and too out to be in. But you have to push on in. Because you're way too close to his destiny to allow your history to prevent your destiny. But pastor, I don't feel comfortable in this place called the church. They're just, they're just different. They're not, they're not my, they're not my folk. I, I, I couldn't join one of them life groups. What would I say? What would it, who would, goodness sake, it feels like I'm out of place. But you see, God wants you there. And so get in it and stay in it and wait. Wait for his coming and wait for his new thing. Didn't he tell you that he would do a new thing in you? Didn't he tell you that you would make he would make you the head and not the tail. And so don't blow your future. Don't quit. She says, don't make yourself known to him. Just wait on God. You know, folks, learn to be patient and wait. Waiting, it's part of the process of learning to trust God. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on the wings like eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. Say to the devil, devil, I'm not going to faint. I'm not going to quit till I see and I hear what Jesus, my Boaz, has for me. For after you have done the will of God. I said after. After. After means after. After you've done the will of God. After you've been a servant. After you've been patient. After you've waited. Naomi says to Ruth, get down to the place. Get down to the house of the Lord. Wait on him and say nothing. Say nothing. Don't start blowing your own trumpet. You're not in the world now. Don't try to shine until he notices you. Don't try to impress him and uh, impress Jesus with your stuff or by your performance. You know what? Just wait and keep faithful. Just keep showing up. Keep showing up to everything and be a servant and wash the feet of others. Be a servant. And at some point, I tell you, Jesus will notice you and then you will have his attention. And you know what? And when you have it, tell the Lord what's on your mind. But don't push too soon. Some of us have been trying to burst stuff and it's not time. Stop pushing. Put the brakes on. Wait. You maybe have the right idea, but at the wrong time. Keep serving. When you get his attention and it's your time, you don't need to push. God knows what you want. Because you want to hear Jesus say to you, listen, blessed are you of the Lord. That's what we're looking for. And that's what we want. And so here are five steps to getting God's attention. Let's recap on them very quickly. Number one, find out God's agenda. Know what is the desire of his heart and your heart. Number two, wash your face. 
Don't let your dirty past affect your future. Number three, anoint your face. Take on a fresh heart and a fresh attitude. It really helps. Number four, change your garments. Dress or be or prepare for where you're going and not where you are. Number five, learn how to wait at his feet. Be a servant without preconditions. Okay, here are five steps to getting God's attention. And I hope and pray that this will be a blessing to you as you seek the Lord in the days that lie ahead. And so now let that be your quest and your desire over the months of July and August. And let's get ready for something special in October. Perhaps you don't know this Jesus and you have been fighting this battle of life for so long and you're tired and things haven't worked out. You've fallen into so many vices that have you captive and have you in such a mess in sin. Let me give you a wee verse that I read this morning, First Chronicles 5 and 20, and it says this. They cried out to God during the battle and he answered their prayer because they trusted in God. Why not put your faith in the Lord Jesus, that even in the battle of life, it might go well with you. Why not let Jesus be the Lord of your life? Why not pray this prayer? Why not uh, make this a prayer of repentance? And you know what? It'll deal with all your sin before a holy God. Why not pray this with me, that it might be well with you and with your family? Let's pray. Father, I come to you in the name of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I submit my, myself, my life, my being, my all to your keeping. And I pray and ask you, Lord, that you'll come into my heart. Give me a new heart. Change me on the inside, Lord. And from this day forward, may I serve you for the rest of my days. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, I'm so grateful for you joining with us today and I, I really hope that we word will, will be a blessing to you as you respond to God's word and begin to seek his face, for, even if it's for the baptism of the Holy Spirit uh, or you just need filled again. And, and you know what, we look forward to next week, to next Sunday, Pastor Bill will be speaking 9 a.m., 11, 6 and 8 p.m. Stay safe, stay under the blood and the Lord bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for joining us online for this service. If there's anything you've heard at all that you feel you need support with, you need prayer for, you want encouraged in, please reach out via all of our social media channels or email us at support at gpastures.co.uk and one of our pastors will be there waiting to get back to you, waiting to reach out, get in touch. Even though we're in holiday season, all those lines of communication are still open. So please reach out and please get in touch. If you have responded this morning to that message to make a call for the first time to follow God, we would love to hear from you. We would love to get around you, support you, encourage you, send you out some material to help you journey that. So please, again, reach out and let us know. We would really, really love to hear from you. We will be back next Sunday with another fresh message from the Word of God, so don't miss out on that. Until then, stay tuned to our social media channels, catch our soap studies that are going up every day as we as a church work our way through the book of Acts, and stay in touch if you need anything at all. See you next Sunday.